I think it was a, like a handicap. I had a, an eye problem. I was uh, cross-eyed, you know, or had a, what, they, what is known technically as an alternating squint. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think, you know, it just, you get a person like that and uh, they can. I, I'm quite sure that in my case that, you know, you'd go to a dance or a party and you were self-conscious. And a lot of these athletes, or many good athletes, I think, might have a similar, I wouldn't call it a problem, it might be an asset in the sense that it drives them in another way in, 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 in the many cases in sport or the arts. It actually is a, I look upon that at my age as possibly not a detriment but an asset because it will drive a person to the heights that they might never do normally. You see, I have this, as most people know, I've got this bad leg and uh, but uh, well, I, was, I was down at the Y practicing this lift, one of the lifts. It's called the two-hand snatch, in which the weight is taken from the floor to overhead in one movement. And I was down there, and I have a bad leg. And I had a pair of shoes on, street shoes. And it was about a, 10 days before I had to go to Stockholm, and I was doing these heavy snatches, and the heel was turned over on one of these street shoes. And after I finished this workout, that foot was so bad it must have twisted it that I couldn't even put any weight on it. And that's the story. It's a funny thing. Uh, it's like, you know, there you are. You know, can you get the scene? And, and uh, here, it's all there. All these, you know, a year of training, two years, or a, a lifetime, you might say, the chance of a lifetime. And here this foot decides that it's going to go haywire on me. And I remember that I tried before I, uh, the last, uh, I tried another workout. I let it rest for a couple of days. Do you know that I couldn't stand the weight of 100 pounds on that foot? And I'm slated. The airline ticket has been purchased. The people are all put the money in there, and here I am, and I can't bear the weight of 100 pounds on that ankle. And that's when uh, people says, Doug, don't go. You see, what are you going to do? So... I had one thing that I thought I could do. I says, if I get on there and I got ten or eight or nine days between leaving and getting ready to go to Stockholm, it's possible with the ankle resting that it might be strong enough. It might come back. And it did. It did. It, 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 I can't remember any pain from that ankle when I got over there, but it just shows you. Now, I could have just said, there's no way it can be done. And, you know, like Julius Caesar, you know, there's a tidy in the affairs of men if taking up the flood leads on to fortune, which I did. Well, I'll tell you, I've had this experience in my life not only once. I've had to lift myself about ten times. And uh, I know that in my life that I'll have to lift myself ten times more. And uh, I think I'm not the only one. I think that everybody has to do this. I thought maybe as the old thing, you're the only one. But the only thing I know about life is, is, is that it's a series of lifting yourself up from one year to the next. That, in other, it isn't something that's, um, this is a natural process of life. It is not a misfortune to have to lift yourself up. It's a thing that takes place as you go through life. And you keep lifting yourself up and you just continue to lift yourself up as long as you can, uh, as long as you're alive. That's the only way that I can see it.